Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to Podcasting for Dummies, the companion podcast. I am your host, T. Morris, and joining me is my co-author and partner in crime, Chuck Tomasi. Chuck, how are you? I'm doing awesome, T. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you. This is our first show, our first recording for 2021. We're looking ahead We're with, with eyes wide open. Don't anybody touch anything. <laughs> let's let's go in. Well, actually, after the first week, we're not going in easy into 2021. But we're off to a good start, I think. We're off to a good start. Um, we're doing well at the house. Chuck, how are things over at, uh, at Casa de Tomasi? How are things? So far, so good. Knocking on Formica. There we go. That's the way to do it. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about Chapter 4, doing a deep dive into podcasting on the go. The title was Go, Go, Power Podcasters, which was a nice way of saying we're going to talk about how we record on the road. It is not an easy thing to do, uh, recording on the road, and because you want to have that, that studio sound. You want to have that clean sound that we're all known for. Uh, in our in our shows and things along that nature, but there is that challenge. There is that challenge of making sure that your audio is clean and that everything is coming out right. Chuck, what do you think are the are the biggest challenges when you're on the road? Uh, the environment is probably the biggest variable that I can think of. If you're at a con and you want to talk to somebody, do you have a lot of background noise? Do you want a lot of background noise? Is that part of the ambiance? So, or, or are you looking for something a little more secluded and private? Uh, I remember we were at Dragon Con and had an interview with Edward James Almos. And normally when you're in the, the Walk of Fame, you know, the, the oh, part yeah. of the convention, all of the <laughs> stars are, it's very noisy. Well, we locked out and had a Saturday morning interview at about 7.30 a.m. And there was pretty much nobody in there except those setting up. It, it's a sci-fi so, con. Nobody is up at 7.30 in the morning. <laughs> well, the problem was neither was I. Oh, no. I was, I, was, I, was, I, was, I sounded like an NPR intro to this. You know, this is Edward James almost. And I start out, welcome to Technorama. <laughs> Hey, we stayed up way too late, and you know what you do at cons. As, <laughs> no, like, as you do at Dragon Con. As you do at Dragon Con. Yeah. It's probably the, the lowest energy I've ever had on any publication. <laughs> now I've got this picture in my head of, of Chuck DeMoss going, So tell me, Edward, how were things on Battlestar Galactica? They go to Edward James almost, and he's like, on Battlestar Galactica, you know, and he because he's he's got that very oh, yeah. low 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 energy. It comes across as low energy, but it's very high intensity. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And One so he actually reinvented himself twice. He started out life wanting to be a baseball star. Yeah, yeah. And then as he was about to turn pro, someone introduced him to guitar, and he was on the road solid for like seven years playing music in a band. And then he discovered acting. Yeah. <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> and, and it's funny you should mention that. Okay. So the, the I wasn't going to tell the story, but now I am. Um, so Edward James almost, I found out, like you said, was big in baseball. And Billy, Billy Bob Battings and, the, and the, the Curse of the Pitcher's Pendant had just been released. So I, I went to his signing table last day of that Balticon, uh, sorry, Dragon Con. And, and I, told, I, I basically pitched him the book and I said, I'd like to offer you this book with my compliments. And he's like, uh, and, he, and he's reading the back and he's looking the book over and he's like, this is right up my alley. I love this. And I said, <laughs> I said, so who do I make it out to Edward? And he looked at me and goes, Eddie. And I was like, Eddie. Okay. Yeah. Eddie. I mean, this is, this is, this is Captain Castile. This is, you know, this is Captain Castile from Miami Vice. This is, um, this is Le uh, not Leon, um, the, the character from from Blade Runner, and this is this is Commander Adama, and I'm writing Eddie with a trembling hand. I'm just like, <laughs> such a great guy though, very nice man, very nice man. Nice so and uh, <clears throat> all that, I, I'm getting to the point here. Yeah, let, we're getting to the point. On the H2, this right. is like one of the original ones that uh, T. You got it. At, what is a prize or is a, a vendor? Thing, it, it, it was a, it was a ven it was a vendor uh, a vendor uh, vendor product for yep. at that time I believe it was the second edition, and because that was the replacement for the Zoom. So uh, was it the Zoom? No, no, no the, this Zoom. Is the Zoom. That's the Zoom. Um, the I River. That was the replacement. I that was the replacement of the I River. So so okay. So chat. Let's talk a little bit about recording on the road. Um, as as uh, Spence in chat says, learn from my mistakes. Do not record in the lobby. So, 
<laughs> or an airport. Or an airport. <laughs> it all depends, though, on whether or not, if you're recording something live, how much ambiance do you want? Mm-hmm. And and I know I have done uh, several interviews on location, and I like the sound of the on location where you can hear the murmur in the background, that low din. But when you're doing that, <clears throat> you have to be very careful where you're recording that that uh, sound setting, right? Um, it's one thing like if you're if you're like in an area where people are chatting around you, and you get a vibe for it, you're like, okay, how close? is the next table. Am I recording their conversation as well as my conversation? How bad is the sound bouncing around? More to the point, <clears throat> how well are uh, how well am I picking up my own sound? And that you you weigh all those factors together. Once you weigh all those factors together, then you can decide this is a good place to interview, this is not a good place to interview. Um, I remember uh, when I was interviewing Robert J. Sawyer uh, Hugo winner, Nebula winner. Basically, if he writes a grocery list, he gets a he gets a literary award for it. Uh, Rob Sawyer and I were interviewing at a con, and I wanted that background noise, but it was so intense that Rob and I just kind of looked at each other, and Rob said, "Let's find somewhere else to do it." And I said, "Yeah." So we moved over to a like a back stairwell that was carpeted. It was perfect, and we recorded everything there, and it turned out it turned out phenomenal. <clears throat> now there may be there may be uh, you know technology can help with a lot of this. I mean if if you have a portable recorder like the H2 that picks up a wide pattern, you're going to get a lot of background noise yeah. in a noisy environment. However, if you were to say <clears throat> go to the H4 or the H6 that has XLRs and use a dynamic microphone that has a tighter pattern it will still get some of the background noise but you'll get the voice that you want a lot better so think about possibly compensating for those noisy environments if that's going to be a recurring theme that you you might want a microphone attached to your portable device that you could either pass back and forth or have one for each even better if you're sitting at a table or something and and that will give you that background noise but it won't overpower the person you hear and most importantly monitor yes your re- monitor re- monitor oh. monitor monitor yourself make sure you can hear yourself and your guest in real time so that brings us to another thing i think we need to we need to clarify that we i don't know if we really went into detail in the book but i want i, I want to take some time in this in this episode to really talk yeah. about the difference between using a portable recorder and using a preamp so, Chuck, what is your? Ex- I know I have some experience with preamps, but but what is your experience with with preamps? None. My preamps are always built into the mixer. That's funny. Okay. All right. So let me go on ahead. And, so so then, external preamp before. I think uh, my son-in-law has something that he said. Hey, would you like to use this? I don't know where I would use that because everything I have either has a preamp built in or the equipment I'm using doesn't need a preamp. Okay, so then I will let you take the driving driving wheel in in asking questions, and I can go in and answer while I set it up. So there was a um, and I can't remember the the, the specific name of the product, but it was it was called the uh, the mobile preamp USB. I believe that's what it was just called, mobile preamp USB. And what this thing did was that it it connected to the USB port of my then um, uh, MacBook. And then what I could do is I could have two XLR microphones plugged in. And so I could run everything from my laptop. So I had the, uh, the, mobile, the, the mobile USB. I had two XLR microphones. And then I had my headphones. So I and could that hear, was your mobile rig. That, that, was was my, really- that was my mobile rig. And the, mm-hmm. sound, the sound and the recordings I got from that mobile rig were absolutely and utterly clean. I mean, it was right. basically my studio on location. So I had some I had some background noise but I could control it. I could control how much that was coming in. And the preamp was powering the uh, the XLR microphones and then I could listen to it in real time because everything was coming through my computer. Um, mm-hmm. the the equivalent of that 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 particular um, uh, mobile pre mobile pre that was the name of it the mobile pre because yeah, I remember it rhymed the mobile pre USB and they no longer make it the the you know it was one of those one of those companies that 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 uh, that shut down 
But it turns out that Shure, and that's S-H-U-R-E, that Shure, the microphone people, um, it turns out they have, as part of their Motive series, the MVI, and that's what this is. Yes, exactly. That's Shure, exactly. <clears throat> um, it's basically uh, a preamp. There's also the Mackie Onyx Blackjack. It's about a quarter of the. It's it's about a quarter to half the size of my mobile pre USB, but it does the same thing. It works as like a bridge between your laptop and your two XLR mics, and it's fantastic. So where's the downside in that? Well, you have all the control of a studio, but then you got to make it portable, and yeah. laptops are pretty heavy to begin with, but then you add in two. XLR microphones, and then you add in the uh, the 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 Shure MVI or the Onyx Blackjack, and now you have a portable rig that will take you about 15 minutes to set up from start to finish. <laughs> and is is everything battery powered, or did you have to find no. some ACs? No, nothing's battery powered. Nothing's battery powered. It's all powered by the USB. But if my if I don't if I'm not near a power source, then I got to rely yeah. on the laptop. And if it's an older laptop, that USB is going to be like, like, oh, hey, I just ran a half marathon. Excuse me. Glug, 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 glug. And then you're sucking down to your battery going down. Exactly. 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 And um, and so so when um, so when you're when you're working with the with the portableness of it, that that takes a hit. It's not like mm -hmm. you just grab grab a uh, an H an H two or you grab a uh, you grab a um, uh, a, um, a a task cam portable and just say let's go. No, you're 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 having to, to shut everything down, build it back together, and then you start recording. So um, yeah. have so, an idea of what level of portability you're looking right, for because right. it could be something as small as an H two that fits in your pocket. You're going to have some challenges with that you can hook up an external microphone to this in fact for years i did this and my headphones and an external mic and it worked really really well it was very small very portable there are other cases where uh i think ben and keith from tg geeks when they go to a con or a film festival or something they bring along pretty much their whole studio it's portable enough they've got a small mixer They've got a number of microphones. They bring a table. They bring uh, all the cables. And then they invite the guests to their room. Yeah. So you can get that controlled environment. So th technically that's portable because they took it out of their studio right. and just replicated it. Uh, I can't do that with the magnitude of things that I've got here. But I've got enough portable goodies that I could go on the road. So it, it really depends on what is your level of pain. Obviously it's tougher to take your whole studio on an airplane to Atlanta when you live in Phoenix than it is from Phoenix to the Hyatt downtown Phoenix. Right. That's easier right. in the back of your car. So think about what you are going to be doing as you do these portable recordings. It could be something as simple as turning on your phone. <laughs> yeah, and and the difference, but, but the main difference that I wanted to talk about between preamps and, uh, and digital recorders is that preamps allow you to have that studio sound and allow you to have the, t the two external mics and allow to monitor in real time while the the recording itself is going into your computer and you can do that you can actually make as you can actually use as a preamp you can also use the h4 or the h6 yep. you don't have to record directly into them um <clears throat> So, so that is that is, that is also one of the trade-offs of, of working with preamps. And again, the reason why you would work with preamps is because preamps tend to give you uh, the 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 flexibility, and you don't have to necessarily worry about the the external noise. It gives you a lot more control than working with just a, a, a digital recorder. But that being said, let's talk about digital recorders. Let's talk about uh, the advantage of working with them. So, so I know Chuck, you've you've done a lot of stuff. You've had, as as it's been been mentioned in the book, you've had uh, the um, uh, you've used your phone, you've used the yep. H four, you've used, I'm assuming, the H six, all on the road. Um, apart from just being able to pick up and go, which is the beautiful thing about digital recorders, what are some of the other advantages in working with digital recorders as your portable podcasting station? 
uh, capacity. I mean, you, you know, have a spare SD card. There's a lot of cautions to be certain. You're going to need batteries and backup batteries. You need an SD card or whatever your storage is and a backup of that. Right. Uh, so the, the, aside from the portability, uh, I like the, the just the fact that it's 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 there it's ready to go at a moment's notice turn it on hold it up and let's go i i i've walked around conventions saying uh you know hey could you cut us an id somebody doesn't have time right. for a full blown interview but you walk up and say sure sure and you get uh, hey this is gil gerard from buck rogers and you're listening to chuck and craig on technorama great right. thanks you know have a coffee on us or something. right <laughs> exactly exactly um, that that <clears throat> who's ready is it, I love that. You, you were going to say? Uh, no, um, we did have a question from chat. This is from uh, Resident Moon Spence. So, listening to yourself live, how do you get used to hearing yourself? Because I know hearing my own voice, and this is the key, hearing my own voice on a slight delay throws uh, me off. So, I don't listen to myself on delay. Um, that to me is very disorienting. And if I, if I ever am in a situation where I'm using someone else's recording setup and I, we are hearing ourselves on delay, this is one trick I do by having, by having one ear out so that I'm not, uh, so I'm isolating only one ear, but I can focus on this other ear and listen to everybody else in real time. I can block this out. <clears throat> that slight delay at one time was used for a dump button uh, when recording live and you're working under FCC uh, laws and you can't say the seven dirty words on, on television or on radio. And if somebody says something like that, you dump them. And that's, that's how you work with that delay. It's a, it is a, it is a, um, a trained talent. It, it is, it is, um, it is a gift. It is a skill. And <clears throat> what I would say is that I try to be able to monitor and listen to myself in real time. And when I can do that, um, it, it's a lot easier for me to get a balance of the background noise and, and put that opposite of you know, how, much, how much gain do I need on my mic, how much gain do I need on my guest's mic. And when you're working live, that's essential to be able to hear yourself. Otherwise, if you're not listening to yourself in real time and you're using a portable recorder, <clears throat> that can become problematic because you're basically you're basically saying okay I can record this and we'll be fine uh, and you're you're kind, of, you're, you're kind of rolling the dice on that you're rolling the dice to see if, if, you, if you have that now Chuck what about you what do you think is the challenge about listening to yourself uh, when you mentioned delay sometimes it's the equipment as well we talked about this in the book about mm -hmm. US older USB interfaces could possibly be injecting a delay just from a hardware latency standpoint look at the technology you've got I, I'm with T on this one. Whenever possible, try to do this in real time. It, it, we're doing that now. I hear exactly what I'm saying at the same time I'm saying it. And I can quickly glance at you know my meters and know that my audio level is roughly the same as T, so that post-production will be less painful. Yada, yada, yada. So the closer you can get to reality, the, the, the less you're going to have. I, I think there was a comment on one of the previous episodes where somebody <clears> said, it is didn't like the sound of their own voice. I thought that's where this was going to go, but it turned into a latency. Spence has got a great voice. Trust me. Spence has got a, she's recorded for me. She has got a phenomenal voice. And as you know, Chuck, when I need voice talent for my podcasts, I only get top shelf talent. Thank you very much, <laughs> Chuck. That's why I asked you instead of Craig. Anyway, so, um, getting back. Oh. <laughs> Craig listens. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to find out real quick. But the, the other reason why it's the other reason why it's it's essential to hear yourself and to hear what's happening around you in real time. I'll give you a I'll give you a real time story. Um, I was asked at at one of my first full time social media jobs to put up a podcast, which I was thrilled to do. They handed me the episode, and I I doing the doing the the thing that I'm that I'm supposed to be doing. I listened to the entire recording. It started off fine but then it became painfully obvious that whomever that where whomever was hosting this interview was hosting it in a break room somewhere because as these two gentlemen are talking two other gentlemen standing close by started talking oh no and i'm like they have no idea that this is that this bled over into the and, and it, it was it wasn't just a you know muffled conversation 
I was picking up notes on like, so what are you getting Brenda for her for her for her anniversary? Oh yeah, I haven't really thought about it. Yada yada yada. And and I'm sitting there going. And meanwhile, the the the, the focus of the two people was on cybersecurity. So we're listening to cybersecurity, but meanwhile, there's this discussion going on about what Brenda's going to be getting for her 10th anniversary. <clears throat> that wasn't as bad until about 10 minutes later. And then two dudes who are having a conversation walk in and both of these guys are projecting. I can't oh. even hear the discussion because these two yucca putzes are having a discussion about what was on the Sopranos the night before. Yeah. And, and then they start dropping F bombs and things like that. I went to my boss and I said, I said, I can't post this. It's unlistenable. <clears throat> and this is where you, if you ever find yourself as a podcast producer, you either have to a put your foot down or B basically sign off on it and say, I take no responsibility for this. And that was what I did. I said, I, I take no responsibility for this episode. And I dropped it in there. And the boss did eventually come. The, my boss's boss came back and said, that podcast was terrible. What, what were you thinking? And, uh, and, and she had nothing. She had nothing because I said, look, I've written a book on this twice. Trust me. I know something about podcasting. So, yeah, um, you, you have to be able to hear yourself in real time because if you don't, um, the, uh, the, the, the possibility that you're going to get audio that you don't want will creep in. Um, <clears throat> if you find yourself in one of those situations and the people at the table next to you are starting to pipe up, you can either pause and resume later when that conversation dies down or that, that you know, interaction that is distracting the listener, or you can relocate Hopefully you've got enough portable stuff that you can just say, hey, let's go find a conference room or you know, a, 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 some other location like like you did with the, the stairwell. Make sure right. it's not totally echoey. And you can always tell your listener if we took a break or maybe you put a break in your show. A lot of shows will do that. You, yeah. you, you fade out or you put in your, your musical transition and you take them to the next scene or, or you, you play somebody else's promo and you come back. So there's there's always ways you can do this with with some creative editing, so that the listener doesn't go, "What just happened? We were we were talking, yeah. and now it's echoey." Uh, you know, or you can say at the beginning, put in a disclaimer, listener. You're going to hear a couple of different things in this. The first part was recorded uh, on site. The second we did outdoors. So when you hear transition, you'll know what's happening. Right. You know, give them some forewarning. So there's a lot of ways you can address that, even at the time of recording. So you don't have to deal with, you know, the, the schmutzes that are dropping F bombs. You, you, you get yourself out of that environment and tell your interview candidate to say, Hey, you know, we should really go find another <clears> thing. <throat> right. I've had those that, that sort of crapped up and you don't notice it till the right. end. It started out real quiet and then a whole bunch of people show up I'm like, what happened here? <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about that too, because I think something that both Chuck and I have in common when it comes to recording on site, recording on location. The big question is, okay, so, <clears throat> um, so, uh, when we're talking about backups, when we're talking about most of the time when you're when you're recording, these are once these are once in a lifetime shots. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I can think of like for example, I had a once in a lifetime opportunity to interview Sam Calgione from from Dogfish. I wound up meeting him two other times after that. But at that time, I thought I am never going to get this chance again. And, um, <clears throat> and so, you know, I got a chance to interview Sam Calgione from, um, uh, from Dogfish. I got a chance to interview Terry Brooks. I got a chance to interview, uh, Richard Hatch, uh, from Battlestar Galactica, who sadly is no longer with us. Uh, what mm -hmm. about you, Chuck? What were your once in a lifetime opportunities when you were, when you were recording portably? A lot of them happen on site at conventions. Like you say, Dragon Con is a, is a recurring theme for me, <laughs> yeah. but there's also, uh, you know, we did a lot of audio tours or interviews with people. We went to the Hoover Dam. Yeah. Like, you know, some of these things take months or even in some cases years <clears throat> to set up mm -hmm. to get the coordination of when will you be there and what's the schedule. And especially with a celebrity, oh, I have to reschedule. Right. 
I think Dr. Dr. Robert Ballard is one that sticks out in my mind, the man who discovered the Titanic and the Bismarck, and wonderful man. But it took over two years to set that interview up. You don't want to screw that up. <laughs> you and, want to make sure that your one take is yeah. is the best you can get. One of the uh, one of the other once in a lifetime things for me was um, it, I, I got a chance to interview the uh, curator and founder of the International Spy Museum. And I, I tell this story because I remember um, uh, he, 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 so I'm just going to use this, uh, this, this portable mic that I'll, I'll go into detail later on in the episode. But I, I was using the H4, and if you've ever seen the H4, it looks like a taser. <laughs> It looks. It's got. The, it's got the weird microphones and everything like that. X microphones. It's got, the, it's got of, like these, yeah. like this X yeah, microphone. It's like, it's like and you're gonna get zapped with this thing. <laughs> he picked it up and he looked at it and he just stared at it and he goes, "What is this?" And I was telling him about the H4 microphone and he was hanging on every word and I'm like, "This guy used to work with the CIA. This guy has seen." He knows every little nook and cranny of the spy museum and the wacky gadgets in there. And he wants to know more about my H4. This is the best day ever. <laughs> but when you talk about backups, so what exactly do you, would you recommend as backups issue that you should always have on hand when working uh, portably? <clears throat> Anytime I'm working out of my office, out, outside of my office, whether it's for podcasting or for doing presentations, I always make sure I have a plan B and hopefully a plan C as well. So I'm always thinking of risk management. What if I get to the customer site and I can't get on their Wi-Fi? Well, you have the PowerPoint on your hard drive, you know, that kind of thing. Be thinking about what you can do if conditions are not ideal. Right. So when it comes to portable recorders, portable equipment, make sure that you've got enough storage you've got backup storage because i've been on site and my sd card just doesn't want to play that day right great grab the backup <clears throat> quick format and and go don't make your your your, your interviewee wait have spare batteries make sure you check the ones you've got before you go yep. so you don't just go oh these worked last time well last time might have been a year and a half ago that i touched this recording right you know, certainly not doing a whole lot of portable recording these days not a lot no homes so you know, take the batteries out so they don't corrode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, cables, <clears throat> headphones, anything that you've got. I know it adds to the bulk of traveling, but it could go wrong. And if it go, if if your headphones go wrong, well, now you can't monitor your audio. Can you put in, you know, the the ones from your phone? Do they have a headphone jack? Could I use those as a backup plan? You know, just anything that that could go wrong, assume it will, and. Yeah. With with the exception, you probably aren't going to be able to afford two mobile recorders. But now, hey. wait, 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 wait. I, w I want to hit that. I want to hit that. I know that sounds wrong in audio, but just hear me out. Um, I want I want to touch on that because actually, you have a personal story concerning the Hoover Dam and working portably. Uh, and in that situation, you were using your phone to record, but somebody else had. That was, that was the H two. Oh, it was the H two. So you had the H two. But you also had somebody's phone recording at the same time, because yes, you, I think we had a camcorder going at the same time too. Okay, so and that's that's where that's where you have to sometimes think. You have to think as cliche as it sounds. You have to think outside of the box when you're when you're working portably. It's like okay, yeah. so let's say I have let's say I have my my H4 and I'm recording with this. All right, this is one of those once in a lifetime things. I'm also going to record on my phone, and if you have a camcorder going, I'm going to set a camcorder here and just record for audio purposes. Yeah. And it that may way, not be the same level of quality. No, it will not. You've got belt, yeah. suspenders, and duct tape. <laughs> it Just accept the fact that your backup recordings will not be the same level as recording with, with proper XLR mics or with, or with a proper recorder. And the reason I bring this up is because, Chuck, what happened at the Hoover Dam? Um, it's not coming to memory. I must have okay. locked it up. I remember because I read that story several times during the editing process. But what it was was that um, the the main device that they were recording on, and this happens a lot when portable recorders come in contact with uh, cell phones. There was and there was there was some sort of weird interference that was coming in. This happened. All oh, no, too that often. Wasn't Hoover Dam. You're you're thinking of the Lowell Observatory. Yes, the Lowell Observatory. Thank you. Go for that. Well, we went we went with Ben and Keith from TG Geeks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and K 
Keith had his brand new Tascam recorder, and I brought my H6. And we were talking to the gentleman there who showed us around. We got to see the the actual telescope that Clyde Tombaugh found Pluto. It was a wonderful tour. We sat down in this nice library, very quiet environment, and did the interview. And Keith called me up the next day, and he said, is your recording okay? I said, let me listen. Yeah, mine sounds fine. He sent me a sample of his, and it had this... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he had propped up his recorder on his cell phone to get an angle at the uh, yeah. this man's mouth. You know, so you get a little more direction on his recorder. Right. And the the RF signals interfered, and unfortunately my H6 must have been far enough away or had better shielding or whatever the situation was. So I gave him my recording because technically it was the same recording. Right. We both right. Heard, asked the same words and said the same questions, and and uh, you know, so that was that was a fail safe that we had two portable recorders. Otherwise, he was going to have a bum and day because it's not every, we can't just drive two hours up the road and go. Can we do that again? Yeah, I've had that happen with some interviews that have been lost to the ages, mainly because they would get RF interference from my cell phone. Now, even if you are, even if you keep your cell phone from a, a, at a safe distance from more modern recorders, there are going to be some older recorders you might be working with that will pick up yeah. on that RF interference. And it was something that podcasters struggled with in 2005, 2006. I lost count how many times RF signals have, have interfered with my, with my um, portable equipment. So having those backups, having your phone... Uh, work as a as a backup recorder, having your um, your portable recorder going, having those redundancies, um, I I can't stress that enough. I cannot stress that enough that that having those backups on hand are going to be a good thing. So uh, uh, we have a backup right now. We are we are streaming this right, and then T's going to extract the stream. I've also got it recording in my H six just in case because because, what I found because that's what happened stream. last that's what happened last last recording yeah. session. That's what happened last recording session. We would have had nothing. There's also when I when we do streams for whatever reason, it seems like there's always kind of this cutoff. It's a it's a bias to one speaker or the other. If if two people are talking, it will cut one out. So you're not hearing the true conversation as I hear it or as T hears it. And and I, I sometimes I'm disappointed by that because I'll ask a question while T's talking and you can't hear the question. We'll just keep going. And the, to the listener, that can be very confusing right and and you just have to sometimes uh massage the audio you have to that this is why when people say oh yeah record it then post it (laughs) that's not the way i podcast the way i podcast is i'm going to listen to it i'm going to make sure that i can edit it and then we're going to then once it's all done then i will release it out into the wild so um, in closing, Chuck, what would you say, uh, were, there, were there anything that, were there any particular topics or any particular uh, subjects that you wanted to, to, to touch on that maybe we glossed over or couldn't get to uh, in, the, um, in, in the chapter on, on portable podcasting? I'm um, pretty proud of that chapter, as, as, as you would imagine, yeah. as the rest of the book. It's one but, of my favorites. Yeah. It has gadgets. Exactly. <laughs> oh, it's gadget galore. Absolutely gadget galore. And also, too, uh, uh, chat, if you all have any questions about podcasting portably, now's a great time to ask them as we're getting to wrap up. So, Chuck, what, what, uh, were, there, were there any parting, uh, parting thoughts you wanted to give or any p- bits of advice? There's, there's, there's going to be more than likely, unless you're using your portable recorder all the time for every recording, there's going to be this shift in workflows. I've got a certain workflow set down when I do my studio recordings, but when I'm on the road, it changes a bit. Not significantly because even in the studio, I'm recording to a portable recorder, so I take the SD card out. I generally, I'm, I'm old school because I still don't trust the software not crashing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you a little, hey, a little bit of paranoia goes a long way in audio video production. Yeah, but what I found in the last few weeks is I have a loose connection on the mixer that was cutting out one channel periodically through the interview. So yeah. you have two tracks, you have one track. You'd have two tracks, you'd have one track. I fixed that since, so we should be stable on that. There's always going to be some some risk or element, but right. the workflow may change. So understand, am I recording directly to the computer where I can just jump in and edit that audio file, or do I have to first transfer it and then change formats or possibly level it, it that kind of thing. So it, it, it may, in fact, impact your workflow a bit. And Freud.dev in chat says, I'm a dev. I don't trust software not crashing, so I think it's only fair. <laughs> 
uh, one humans. <laughs> yeah, one of the things I would I would say in 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 uh, in closing would be that um, yeah, don't uh, don't let that lack of your studio bells and whistles uh, affect you when you're when you're podcasting or in fact streaming content creation of any time on the road. I say this because one of the um, what I thought was one of the best streams that I that I did in 2020 before uh, before COVID really hit was I was uh, I, w- I was strapping my um, my phone onto a, 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 a steady cam and I did this morning walk with a group of authors that I was at a retreat with and all I did was just walk along the beach and I didn't even point the and I streamed it I didn't point the camera at us I pointed it out towards the ocean. And I just said, "Come on a walk with the, come on a walk in the ocean with the tea monster," and it was okay. literally like an hour of just walking along the sh- the shore. I got some of my best analytics from that. <laughs> it was like ASMR with writers. Uh, uh, and and what was even better was on the last walk that I streamed, we saw dolphins, and I caught it on stream. You can actually see dolphins. Oh, but neat. The, but the thing is. I don't have the bells and whistles that you see here. I didn't have the podcasting for dummies cover or the Twitch for dummies cover or gaming with a team monster and my and the bitly for my for my Discord. And there's some people that really get uptight. I don't have my alerts. I don't have all the bells. It doesn't matter. You're creating content. And well, that's kind of where I was going. You mentioned the dolphins. It, the, the being out of the studio and being on the road can really unlock some creative ideas really can it really really can and um and i i challenge podcasters everywhere if you have a podcast you know make yourself portable and one of the things with um um uh uh, one of the things that 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 freud and uh and spence i think can attest to is that sometimes your podcast is nothing but portable uh, I know Freud does a lot of interviews with, uh, uh, or has been has been working with Code for Puerto Rico, and um, Code for Puerto Rico is an initiative for open source projects, and it's it's obviously based in in uh, in Puerto Rico, and Freud has uh, now granted this past year, um, he's been probably been doing everything with Zoom and with Skype and and those types of interviews, which in its sense is kind of working working portably but once we're able to get out once we're able to actually you know see each other safely again you're going to see more and more interview podcasts i think popping up in fact it wouldn't surprise me at all if in in the post covid era you're going to see a lot of podcasts about surviving the covid pandemic (laughs) i'm I'm, yeah i mean we can chuckle about it but i i kid you not Chuck, I will lay down five dollars right now in this podcast. You're going to see all these different podcasts on surviving the pandemic, or you know, surviving COVID, and all the all you're going to see. And it's going to be people actually like on the road, ha- holding interviews, hosting interviews in real time. And I challenge you to work portably because it it really gets you thinking creatively and 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 looking at new ways of. <clears throat> of of creating an atmosphere and being able to do the same things you do in studio but doing it on the road so thank you everybody for joining us for this episode of podcasting for dummies the companion podcast remember you can pick up the fourth edition of podcasting for dummies the companion podcast remember it's the one with the cute with the cute lady on the uh on the cover and you can wish pick, I knew her name. yeah i wish i knew her <laughs> name um getty images and <laughs> We'll just call her Getty. We'll just call her Miss Getty. And uh, and we'll, it sounds a lot better than Miss Deposit Photos, so I'm just going to just say that right there. But anyway, uh, it's got Miss Getty on the cover, and it's the fourth edition of Podcasting for Dummies. You can pick that up at bookstores everywhere, both brick and mortar and online, as well as, of course, Amazon.com. And you can res- subscribe to this podcast on podcastingfordummies.com. This podcast is available on Apple Podcast on Google Play, on Stitcher, and now Spotify. You can listen to us on Spotify now, everybody. And remember, folks, the Podcasting for Dummies, the companion podcast, is protected by a non-commercial, no-derivative, share-alike, United States 3.0 license, and you can find out more about that license at creativecommons.org. So on behalf of Chuck Tomasi, thanks for listening, everybody.